Hello and welcome to another episode of Lord Splodge Gaming. This time we're going to take a look at one of the Wave 2 expansions for the Star Wars X-Wings miniature game from Fantasy Flight. If you check the link that should appear about now below, you will be directed to the review of the core set I did earlier. Uh, if you haven't seen that review, I suggest you check that out first. Anyway, this is Slave 1, a large ship expansion from Wave 2 of Star Wars. And so let's unbox it and have a look, see what I think of it. So here we have the Slave 1 model uh, mounted on its uh, large base. As you can see, it is a pretty decent looking model there. I mean, it's, it's good looking, it's very detailed even on the back. It's not as good looking as the Millennium Falcon, but then what ship is? You know, she might look like a hunk of junk, but it's a very nice model. Anyway, that's that. It comes with, as you'd expect, some pilot cards. So you have Cass Scarlet here, who is a seven pilot skill, and the stats of the Firefly are three attack, two evade, six hull, and four shields. So, <laughs> you know, not bad at all, but. If you think back to what a Y-Wing was like, it's it's not brilliant, but each one of these has a row of upgrades that we can have here. Uh, that's the bottom. And the actions that you can perform are focus, uh, target lock, and evade. That's Cast Scarlet. You have generic bounty hunter who's got slightly less pilot skill and can have slightly less upgrades, but same actions. Oop, Cast Scarlet's got a special upgrade by the way, sorry, missed that one. When attacking the defender receives one stress token if he cancels a critical result, not a bad one. Then we've got the Fett, Boba Fett himself, a, a whole load of upgrades he can have, the actions, but here's probably what the best move is. When you reveal a bank manoeuvre, left or right, you can rotate that dial either the opposite direction. And that's an act that's after you've revealed. So once you know where the other person's going, you can change your mind. That means it should allow you, hopefully, to get behind them and give them a shot. And then we've got Krasik's Trellix, I think that's how you pronounce him. Uh, fans of the extended universe uh, might know a bit more about him than... Uh, or the correct way of pronouncing him, should I say. Anywho, he gets when attacking with a secondary weapon, you may reroll one attack dice. And he's got a pilot skill of five, and that's the cards it comes with. You get the appropriate bases for those to go on uh, the fire squad. You get two rules cards, one for the iron token, that's the same rules as the Y-Wing, um, so if you look up one of my other reviews, I did the Y-Wing, you can see where that one is, uh, see what that is. And this is the bomb tokens, there's two different types of bombs. There's a seismic charge token, uh, and that will drop behind you at range 1, and when it explodes, it suffers 1 damage. And there's a proximity mine, which again drops behind you, uh, and any ship that touches it, you roll three damage and suffers all damage and critical damage. So what you do is, this is the size of the proximity mine for example. So on the board you would place that in the two tabs there. It fits like the movement templates and then you'd leave it there. And in here somewhere we have the token, there it is. For the seismic charge and again same thing in there off you go and that's that 
comes with tokens, as you'd expect. You know, stress tokens, shield tokens, uh, ID tokens, and so on. It also comes with a token for the missions, because there is, in the rulebook here, you get the rulebook for rules for large ships and the new upgrade cards. And you also get a mission, mission five in this case, Prey Stalker. And there is, somewhere amongst these piles of tokens, that are thrown all over my desk, is a token for that mission. I can't find it right now. Ah, got it. Here we go. Talking rubbish. There it is. That's a token for the mission. And finally, we get a raft of upgrade cards. So we've got the iron cannon there. We have expose as an action. We have the one for seismic charges. And there's one for proximity mines. There's a stealth device, which is pretty good. Increase your agility value by one. If you're hit by an attack, discard this card so it makes you faster. Um, and you can have a gunner. So he's, he's a general gunner guy. Another stealth device. Excellent heavy laser can. You have the mercenary co pilot. So instead of the gunner, uh, assault missiles. which are a like, better version of the proton, missile, the proton torpedo kind of thing. And finally, you can actually name it a slave one. And when you do that, it lets you have the uh, appropriate upgrade. That's pictured there on the screen, so you can fire those when you've got a slave one. And one thing about a slave one is its firing arc is it's got the 45 degree, the 90 degree front angle there. And it also can fire backwards. Unlike the Millennium Falcon, it can't fire 360 degrees, but it can fire forward and backwards. So that's that. So that's Slave 1, a uh, Wave 2 large ship expansion for Star Wars X-Wing. Let's uh, wrap this up with my final closing thoughts. So that was uh, Slave 1, um, or Fire Spray 31, I suppose, if you want the... Um, sort of generic name for it. Anyway, uh, everybody knows it as Slave One, it's Boba Fett's ship. As you can see, it comes with Boba Fett himself and a couple of other expanded universe characters. It's more maneuverable than the Millennium Falcon. Um, that's a craft that I've not yet bought because, uh, well, I'm collecting Rebels at the moment, but I have played uh, with the Falcon. And the 360 firing arc of the Falcon is can be more an advantage in some scenarios, but overall they're pretty much, you know, as far as I can tell at the moment, evenly matched. The Falcon has this, the Slave One has that, so on and so forth. But as far as expansion goes, it's a quality ship, it's well painted, it sits on its stands, the upgrade cards are good, and reasonably priced. I mean, I got this for about £20 in the UK, which isn't bad, and it's still available, unlike some of the other Wave 2 ships. I mean, I've been trying to get a TIE Interceptor and can't do that for love nor money. So, if you're a Rebel player or just want a nice model to go in your X-Wings miniature game to sort of complete the set, then Slave 1 is more than worth getting. I thoroughly recommend this, uh, but then again, I'd recommend it because it's part of the Star Wars universe and the excellent Fantasy Flight Star Wars miniatures games. So, that's it for this time. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.